Want to give a huge shout out to my friend Easy for requesting this video. Thanks, Easy, and I hope you enjoy it. So I know we've been getting a lot of questions on leases, and I want to go over this again because it's been almost a year since I did a video on leases in DocuSign. So if you need to send a lease application, then this video is for you. So let's go. It's your favorite tech trainer, Bryn Brewer, and yes, we're going to do a lease application in DocuSign. Now, this is not the full process. If you want to see the full process from command over to DocuSign and back into command to upload your documents to submit for compliance, then check out my video, Send Documents Like a Pro. I have part one and part two. Part two is updated just done a couple weeks ago. So let's jump right in. We're going to be in DocuSign and for Keller Williams, that's rooms.docusign.com. You can go from command and do that as well because when you click that start your transaction button, that's going to link command to your DocuSign. You also need to make sure your NRDS IDs are inside of your integrations inside of preferences in order to access the documents. So I am in my room, my tenant room. I'm going to click on documents and as you can see I do not have the lease application in here. So I'm going to click on this blue add button. I'm going to click on DocuSign forms. I'm going to click on the group that says KW Pro Tenant. If you want, you can click on the library that you think has this. The groups are just a collection of widely used documents, the most commonly used documents. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one because that's where I know my lease application is. I can scroll for it or I can type in the search bar for it. And here's my residential lease application. I'm going to click add. The kicker to the lease application is you have to send it twice. So you have to put one tenant in an, one envelope and the second tenant in another envelope. So you do have to do two envelopes for this process if you have two tenants. If you have three tenants, you will do the process three times. So you will click in your uh, residential lease application. You're going to put the property address in. If you don't know it, leave it blank. If you don't know any of this, leave it blank. The rest of the stuff has to be filled in by the tenant. Okay, that's why you cannot fill it. It has to be filled in by the tenant. The only thing that you can select if the applicant has or has not viewed the property in person prior to submitting this application. Okay, so just make sure that you select that. It is required field. So if you know that, put it. If you don't know it, um, find out. So now I'm ready to go ahead and send this. So I'm going to select the application in the top left corner of the document. Then when I do that, this row of icons appears and I'm going to just click on the pin, which is the create envelope icon. And then I'm going to choose who's going to fill this out. And then I'm going to click continue. All right. So now I'm on my envelope detail page. You can see here's my residential lease application. Here is my tenant one. I'm going to put my tenant one in here and that is all. And then I'll scroll down to the message section and add a message if I want to. Then I'm going to click the yellow next button. And now you can see all of these yellow fields will be assigned to your tenant one. You can see who's signing in this drop down in the top left corner. Your fields that you can pull over are here under standard fields on your left sidebar. You can scroll through, make sure everything looks correct. Your tenant will be filling this out. Remember, your tenant will be filling filling this out. Okay. They will be required to sign here and it'll date it for them. I'm going to pull this date over just a little bit. And then here, there's some text here. I'm just going to pull over. Um, I'm going to delete that out and I'm going to pull over their name and just put that there so that it auto fills for them. And we may not know the address, so I may or may not leave that blank. The tenant will sign here and that's it. Then you'll just click send. Once you've clicked send, your tenant will get an email where they need to sign. I put myself as a tenant so I can just go in the envelope and do that, but your tenant will get an email when they click on the link in the email. It's going to look like this. They're going to click continue. They're going to click start. They're going to sign so they can sign, but you're going to have to tell them unless you make the fields required to actually come in here and type on these fields. You see how I can type in here, but it's not required like the signature is. So if you want it to be required that they fill these things out, you're going to have to make each field required, but otherwise they can just click here and it doesn't look like to me, like it's clickable and type and you're able to type in, but you actually are. And so this is where a lot of people are getting confused. So they can go ahead, they can type in here 
and your tenant is going to fill out their own information and they're just going to keep filling all this out. Do you see all of this is optional? Yes. So let me show you what this is like when it's finished. Like we're pretending that I filled all this out. We're going to click finish. Now this is completed. The, the tenant has filled it out. Now in order for me to send it to a second tenant to fill out, I would select the same residential lease application, click create envelope, pick tenant one again, and click continue. Now I would put my second tenant's name here and their email address, right? And I'm, I'm just going to keep repeating this for every tenant that I have. So for signing purposes, and I don't want to send anybody anything, I'm just going to put myself, but you guys kind of get the point, right? All right, so I added the tenant. Add my message, click next. Now remember in the previous envelope, I showed you that it didn't look like you could sign it. I mean, it didn't look like you could fill it, but you could. So let me show you how to make a field required. So here we go. I'm gonna click on this field and you see over here on the right hand side, if I make it required, do you see the difference? If it's required, it is completely filled with color. If it is not required, it is only outlined. Required, not required, okay? If I need something to make sure it is filled out, I'm gonna go ahead and click this required button on everything, okay? So make sure if you want them to fill it out, you go ahead and make sure that you click this required checkbox. Okay, you're going to repeat the process we just did on the envelope and that is it. So for every tenant you have, you are going to repeat this process, whether you have one tenant, two tenants, three tenants, four tenants, five tenants, it doesn't matter. You're just going to keep adding them individually to their own envelope and sending it. And when you get done, you're going to have however many tenants you have, you're going to have final green sign document in your DocuSign room. Okay, under the documents tab. Be sure and let me know in the comments below. If you love letting the tenant fill out their own application instead of handing them a piece of paper to fill out and you love doing it digitally, hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next week.